to remain dedicated to the kingdom of heaven is a treasure far beyond any material possessions. But its cost is a willingness to give up what you have to follow Jesus. You give up what you have to follow Christ, and you tell someone else about it. A disciple is someone that um, did, um, a disciple is uh, somebody that listens to the teacher and gives out what the teacher is Our prayer, our prayer is we can we can read the prayer together. Uh, well, no, repeat after me. Some people don't have it. Book up. Father, Father, grant us the wisdom, grant us the wisdom, wisdom to recognize the priceless nature, to recognize the priceless nature of, your of your kingdom, of your kingdom, and give us the courage, give give us the courage, courage to heal all that we have for it. You, all that we have. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our, um, and I want you to go back and read Job. The um. The devotional reading is Job 28. Read Job 28. It's about wisdom and walking in wisdom. And to sell everything you have for it. To give everything you have for the wisdom of God. But read Job. And, and, and the, the scripture is about where can we find wisdom. The price of wisdom is about is, is higher, way above rules. It can't be it can't be bought. And the fear of God is wisdom. So we have to. Go back and read Job. It, it, it is our devotional reading, and it, it really touches you. And if you really don't can't get the grasp of it, read it in the Message Bible. Pull up the Message Bible on your um, internet. The Message Bible will really, really break it down to where you get a, a really understanding of, of what God is trying to say in His Word. But um, uh, thought to remember: the kingdom of heaven is of ultimate value. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you for our lives, help and our strength. Thank you for allowing us to come before you one more time, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we just adore you. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. There's none above you, none below you, none beside you, God. You are God and God alone. We ask you to bless us today, Lord Jesus. Touch us in your name, Lord. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for bringing us to the church. We ask you to bless everybody that's coming over the highways and the byways. We come here or to get to wherever they're going in their churches. Touch every, touch them, Lord Jesus. Bless them in the name of Jesus. I hope that something will be said today, Lord Jesus, that will get down in our hearts and we'll be able yes. to, to chew yes. on it and marinate on it yes. and think on it, Lord Jesus, and make our lives better. We ask you to bless our pastor, Lord Jesus. Touch him in the name of Jesus. We ask you to help us to pray for him, to keep his hands held up, Lord Jesus, to take the weight off of him, to help him to stand. Bless his family, Lord Jesus. Yes. Keep your arms of protection round about him and his family, Lord Jesus. We love you. We honor you. We adore you, Lord. We have something to be said in the message today, Lord, that will bless our hearts and bless our yes. hearts. We love you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. amen. The church, say amen again. Amen. 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 What a wonderful day to be here. Yes, sir. First and foremost, I want to thank all who came out to help yesterday. All who had a desire that may have been deterred and didn't make it, but if you just had the thought that you wanted to help, I thank you. I want to thank those brothers, Brother Johnson, uh, Lee Johnson, Amen. and Brother Andrew Dent for coming out Amen. to give us a hand. Thank Brother Ray for helping us, Brother Willie, I want to thank Sister Joanne came out, very instrumental. She fought with that door in the kitchen. <laughs> Let me tell you, I almost thought she was going to remember where she used to smoke cigarettes when she was cleaning that door. Because the pet didn't want to cooperate, but it was my fault I didn't get primer first and trying to paint over a dark, dark weathered door mm -hmm. is, a, is a struggle within itself. Oh, yeah. But we pressed, we pressed on and we pressed on until we got to where we can do it. Amen. And it just, you know, we did what we can do and God was blessing us and then yes. they made me sit down. Because mm. <laughs> yes. y'all know I wasn't going to sit down. Y'all know I was going back out there and they, I was overruled. I was yeah. outvoted. That's right. And when you get outvoted, you know, you have to follow the will of the people. So Amen. Amen. people said, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. But I was ready, I was ready to go right back out there, mm -hmm. I'll tell you. But it was just a good, wonderful occasion 
knowing that we're trying to do something in the name of the Lord to, to maintain what He's given us, what He's allowed us to have, because there's a lot of folks that don't have what we have. They're paying mortgages, they're renting places, they're, they're in a, a lot of need and desire, and yet we have this beautiful structure that God has allowed us to have, and now we're trying to restore it. And we want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the folks that have contacted me that wanted to know how they can send a check in, one of the address. And I'll give the address uh, at the beginning of today and then at the end of the service. The address is 137 Endora Street, E-N-D-O-R-A Street, Buena Vista, B-U-E-N-A V-I-S-T-A, Pennsylvania, 15018. So our building fund, we will always accept money from our, for our building fund because it just doesn't stop on the outside. We have some projects we want to take care of on the inside so that when our guests and visitors come in, that they come in and they say, well, this is a nice place and you're doing something. And this is all in the name of the Lord because Amen. God strengthens and glorifies us and God gives us what we need. And he provides us, and just having another day to see of his grace and mercy to breathe his air, yeah. to, to be able to walk on this earth, we need to do whatever we can to show him thanks. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm truly thankful for all, trust me, for all that he's done for me. Amen. Amen. I've come a long way, a long way, baby. And he's never left me or forsaken me, but I just want to say thank you. Before I forget, and I've asked before, if there's any anniversaries or birthdays, please let me know so that I can include them in our bulletins. Uh, my sister, whom I always mention on Sundays because she's always saying, you got to say my name. And then when I say her name, she goes, goes boy, why did you say my name? I said, did you tell me to say your name? She goes, you tell everything. I guess you're going to tell them that I used to smoke crack. I said, they already knew you used to smoke crack. Yeah. So, ain't no biggie. But my sister, Jennifer Boswell's birthday was uh, Friday. And I think she turned 200 years old or something like that. Well, I know it's at least 70, but it might be 200. So I usually, my family, they know me for my birthday song. So everybody gets a birthday song. It's almost the same. I just changed the lyrics slightly to the song to customize it to each person. So... And I've been doing this for years, so I probably, when I die, they'll probably sing this birthday song, and you know, everybody will come up and make their own little version of it. But every year, I try to put something. In. Even with people that I work at, work with, um, when I was, especially at the dealership, when we have birthdays, everybody says, "Okay, it's time for the song." I says, Are you kidding? Well, you started it, so I've been doing this for years. But here's her song for today. Happy birthday, Jennifer Boswell. Happy birthday to you. To make your birthday turn out right. I promise I won't tell anything about you. Happy birthday, Jennifer Boswell. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, Jennifer Boswell. Ain't it good that God got us off that crack and we can live a free life? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> uh, today is my daughter. The daughter they cooked? Yes. For today is her birthday. She's turned 50. Fifty. I thought she was like 23, 24. She said, "You know, turning fifty today." Ooh, good yeah. crack, don't crack, hey, amen. Yeah, I thought Look at Joanne. Joanne just I turned. I just uh, had a birthday, July the sixteenth, and I just turned seventy-seven. Ain't God good? Man, man, you would never know. Man, <laughs> see, now you got a birthday song. <laughs> Happy birthday, Joanne, Joanne. Happy birthday to you to make your birthday turn out right. I'm going to buy more red paint for you. Happy birthday, bro. Stay there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Joanne Slater. Happy birthday to you. And happy birthday to Sister Reverend's daughter, Nicole. So she tunes in. Happy birthday, Nicole. What's her name? Nikki, you can say Nikki, she'll Happy birthday, Nikki, Nikki. Happy birthday to you to make your birthday turn out right. We're going to have you cook more food. Happy birthday, Nikki, Nikki. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Nikki, Nikki. Happy birthday to you. It's so good to see Sister Ruby in the house again. Yes. You know, when I, when I pulled around the corner and I saw her, she, you know, she's looking... And she was surveying the work, you know, she was, and I could see she was like, mm -hmm. 
and they missed that spot there. <laughs> yeah, they've been working. I see they've been working. Uh huh. And I, it just did my heart good to see her. Yeah. To know that, you know, when she comes home, that she came here to worship with us. And, and we're praying that on your journey back to Toronto, Toronto yeah. that you have a safe journey, that you find your home the way that you left it with no incidents, no problems, no issues. You have no issues on the road, and that you find everything in place, and that you continue to live a long, fulfilling night life. And and our our broadcast is on Facebook, so if you want to tune in on Facebook, um, you can see our broadcast and see our services. If you ever want to tune in, I, I don't know if you're apt to the Facebook or anything like that. Some folks is I don't do the Facebook, and then I see some of our um, citizens that's a little more seasoned and, and they know more about it than me so go figure you never know you never know but i just wanted to say thank you to everyone which my sisters and everyone who has a birthday or an anniversary happy birthday happy anniversary because you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for god amen, amen. amen. and like it says if it had not been amen. for the lord where would i be where would i be you know we've gone through so much and you know, I, yesterday as I toiled and tossed and I went home and I was just exhausted and wore out. And I'm trying to think, okay, I gotta get this sermon together for tomorrow. But you know, God always has a ram in the bush. Yes, he does. And, and, and I was talking to uh, another pastor a couple uh, weeks ago, we were talking and we were talking about preparation for sermons and preparation for Sundays. And he, he, he asked me about mine and I said, well, I, I try to, Compose and compile everything before I go in and I have a thought and I expound on that thought. He says, yeah, I'll have a thought and I'll go in and I don't have a, 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 a idea in my head till I hit the pulpit and whatever the thought was and I just preach from there. And I says, you know, I, I understand because I've been in that position that we may be thinking one thing and God changes that sermon on the yeah. spur of the moment. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So as I thought yesterday, I says, okay, well, all week I've been so concentrated on the church because the Lord knows we, I've been out here three, four times, whatever, you know, painting, power washing, cutting tree bushes and stuff down, trying to get things done because I know that if I want my house to look nice, then I should at least have that same concern for the Lord's house. Amen. So trying to do things that's been not done for, for a while, and it's no one particular person's fault, but we can all pitch in to make sure it is correct. Amen. Yeah. So we won't point fingers. We'll just point paintbrushes and get to work. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll point uh, uh, assignments and get to work. And so I didn't have the opportunity to to properly prepare a sermon, but God always has one in a ram in the bush. And then I got up this morning and I says, "Boy, I didn't make the programs up." I says, "Well, maybe I won't have programs." And God says, uh, is, "Is that what I told you to do?" And I'm thinking, "No, no." He says, you got breath? I says, yeah. He says, you still got an idea in your head? I says, yeah. He says, that computer thing still works? I says, yeah. The printer works? Yeah. And you ate breakfast? I says, yeah. So you got time to go in there and print some programs up. And I says, okay. And uh, I went in there this morning and I did the programs because usually I try to do those a day or so in advance. However, when it comes to the scripture and the responsive reading and the praise song, they're going to be the same as last week. Because I was running on empty. And I says, I think the church will forgive me for that if we just sing that same song and read that same scripture. Because it all deals in faith. And, and yeah. you know, no matter how many times you talk about faith, faith is faith and we have to keep yeah. our faith. We have to stay, stay vigilant yeah. in our faith yes. for everything that we're doing, mm -hmm. even when it comes to the restoration of the church. So. Mm -hmm. If you guys will forgive me for this week, I didn't change that part of it. But as you can see, I took the time to change the pictures and, and the scripture and stuff. But I, I find that I try to be dedicated to what I do. Amen? Amen. And that's part of what I try to do. So um, our praise song today has come from uh, 222. We've come this far by faith. We can sing the first verse of that. Because guess what? We have come this far by faith. Yeah. We didn't come by this far by faith and didn't lean on the Lord. Because <laughs> I know my friends let me down. Mm -hmm. Anybody else friends let me down? Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody else friends when you call them, they act like they couldn't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when they got caller ID, they really didn't answer the phone. Because mm -hmm. they thought you wanted something. 
you know, you know how folks get when they think you want something. You can't find them then. But when they want something, here they come. Amen? Mm -hmm. Even when it comes to prayer. So uh, we'll, we'll start with this. Uh, we we'll come this way. Anybody want to start the song? Because y'all know I, I ain't a real good song to start. I kind of fall in. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on. She was doing what she was supposed to do. Amen. Amen. But she stuck with it. She goes, I'm not giving up on this. Mm -mm, it ain't, no, ain't going to have me going home looking like this. Mm -mm. We're going to stay here. Today, everybody, we're going to stay here till I get this right. And that's what we did. Diligence and faithfulness. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you helping us out and coming over from your church to give us a hand at our church. Amen. 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 Not too often we have faithful brothers and sisters around anymore. Not too often. Brother Larry, welcome back. We were praying for you. Hopefully you had a, I don't want to say a great time because I know you were going for a certain type of a business, but we hope that you were able to maybe enjoy the part of the family that was still alive while you were there and fellowship with them. So we're glad to see you back. We miss you. We love you. We're so happy that you're back in our midst. Safe, sound. Yes. Ready to work, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, then we'll have our sick prayer. Is there anyone that will I have my sick list? So if there's any additions or, or uh, corrections to it, let me know. I have on our sick list. We have a Sister Carol Williams. I've got to touch base with her to make sure she's doing okay. Sister Ashley Rice, I imagine she must be working again. You said she got started back working over there at um, Gates. Gates, yeah. Praise God that, uh, you know, for, for working. 
uh, wish some of these places would be closed on Sunday, but you have to do what you have to do. Yeah. And so we understand, and we'll keep her in prayer. Yes, that everything goes well over there. That you know, because being sometimes working in a place like that, you have to deal with so many personalities, mm -hmm. not just the customers, but the people that you work with. Those are the people that make it unbearable mm -hmm. because they come up with these issues, and you're trying to fight against the issues and maintain your Christianity, and you mm -hmm. get challenged. Let me tell you, you get challenged big time when you're at work. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep keep her in prayer, and Sister Leah Rice, and I, and I know she's uh, probably adjusting a hopefully quite well to her situation with the diabetes and Sister Sharon Way, we have to always keep her in prayer. Mm -hmm. Minister John Murphy, the last time I talked to him, he was doing well, but of course mm -hmm. that's a struggle within itself. Yes. Brother George Stevens, that's uh, Lavinia's husband, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, Brother John Coles Jr. Now, how is he doing? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going down this, this week to see him. Okay, well, we, we, he's, on our, you know, he's on our sick list. Um, Brother Rodney Bradshaw, we have to keep him in, in prayer. Amen. Brother Emmanuel Lewis, and you just mentioned somebody else, I think. Well, you told me your daughter's birthday. We sang her birthday, but somebody else we were supposed to pray for, I think. Oh, if I can't remember, charge it to my head, not to my heart, because I'm uh, not as uh, young as some of y'all. <laughs> so I forget at times. But Heavenly Fathers, we come before you to pray for these folks who are standing in the need of prayer. I ask that you reach down from the mighty clouds of heaven, Heavenly Father. Yes. And you touch these souls, touch their minds, and touch their bodies, Heavenly yeah. Father. Give them comfort and relief. Let them know that you are and the only one who can take care of their situations. You've given us doctors to help cure us, Heavenly Father, to help heal us and to help treat some of the illness that we have. But you are the ultimate doctor, Heavenly yeah. Father. Yeah. You yeah. sent your yeah. son because you said, I don't need to send my son to cure a well man, but for the sick. And Heavenly Father, we are all sick and standing in the need of prayer. But for those who are sick and shut in, I ask that you touch their bodies, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Keep their minds and their spirits strong, Heavenly Father, as they go day by day. Let them know that you're there for them. And you, they can call on you any time of day or night. Yeah. Not all answers will be what they want, but Heavenly Father, you will answer them and you will be as good and just yes. God. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. 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 It's just, once again, so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we have to keep our faith that what we ask him to do, he will do. Because God always comes through. Amen. Yes, he does. Give him one of these two, bro. Thank you. And, you know, I'm always trying to figure out some new idea or something, you know. Something to promote our church. So I... <laughs> I saw these when we went to the YWBA. Uh -huh. And if you take the little plastic tip off, they light up. And I've yeah. seen them. That. So it's got a name. I didn't have enough space to put the entire address. So I just put Baptist Church of Blydell. Everybody knows Blydell. So. Yeah. Just one more thing to promote us, you know, because we, we want to get the word out there. We want the, we want the community and the world to know that we're here. We're not going anywhere. Amen. We're here to do God's work. Amen. And we're here to try and throw hooks in all those folks that's lost and looking for a place to go and worship. And some of the folks that's not exactly happy where they're at, we want to hook them and bring them in here because guess what? We're open to everybody. Black, white, pink, purple, Amen. Republican, Democrat, uh, uh, independent. We don't care. We want you to come in and hear the word of the Lord. Something may be said that may touch you and help you to get a better relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's all we can ask. Uh, responsive reading is 579 Faith. We're going to read that one more time this, this Sunday. Amen? Amen. Because I said it needs a blank. <laughs> Some folks would just say, well, oh, just skip over it. But you know what? <laughs> God didn't skip over us this morning when he woke us up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Did he pull y'all's eyeballs back and says, hey, see what I did? <laughs> Get on up. Amen? Amen. 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 579, faith. Because we have to run on faith. We have to amen. depend on God for everything. Amen? Amen. If you ever say amen, if you haven't said amen, wait for me. Amen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For yeah. by is the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By high faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he did yet speak it. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it, it is impossible to please him. him. For, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness which is by faith. By, by faith, faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise altogether. For he looked for a city, city which had foundations, whose builder and maker, and maker is God. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank God Thank for you. the word. Thank God for the Praise word. Lord. Any announcements today? Any new announcements? No one we need to know of. The only announcement I have, I think, as I said on Tuesday, we're going to try to do some more work around uh, finishing up outside. We've got the major main stuff done. My, my biggest, biggest objection, I mean, uh, uh, priority was this wall here getting up high. Now, we still have to go up there and, and finish up, but it's going to be short work because the crew that we have knows what to be, what has to be done, and we're going to get it done. Amen. Amen. I'm a doer, not a talker. I like to get things done. I like to have a, pro a, a program. I like to have a plan when I start a job. That's just how I, I work. Amen. I don't like to just say, "Well, I'm going to do this," and I don't have any kind of plan of how I'm going to accomplish that job because I don't like working blind. I like to know that I'm going to start here and I'm going to end there. And doing that process, I'm going to have to do A, B, C, and D, and with contingency plans of X, Y, and Z. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's how we should be working. So, uh, as I said, Tuesday, I plan on coming back out and um, completing. Most of the work will be lower level work, which will be easy for us not having to go on the ladder. And we should be able to, two or three people start, one on this end, maybe one on this end, one in the middle with rollers. Yep. And we can knock this thing out. Amen. Amen. Because we're going to show the community that Ebenezer is here. Yeah. We're here to stay. I'll pick up yeah. that primer because we fought with those doors because of my <laughs> lack of foresight and didn't get the primer. Uh, we learned. Yeah. And I know you need primer for most things, but by me buying paint primer for the outside, it skipped my mind that this dark door is going to need primer. And oh boy, we taught a lesson. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but we learned that we, we, we live and we learn. So Amen. That, that's a wonderful thing. But we're going to get it done. Amen. Um, it's offering time. Amen. Hey, she came here right in time. Amen. Amen. Offering time. Amen. And Lord, she worked yesterday and every day. She worked. I, I felt so bad for when she got home. I, I said, I can't even find nothing to argue about it. Usually I find something to about it. So she had worked so hard. And I, was, I was just so proud and so happy. And she came in here and she vacuumed and she did everything. The sister of Marilyn calls and said, can you do this? Anything else? Listen, I was like, you hear what you want to hear? I said, yeah. I mean, you know, young married man, ears are uh, additional. You have to buy them extra. They don't come with the package. <laughs> but we worked and we worked and... Uh, that's what it's all about, taking care of God's house. Amen.
Just read what's in the red. Uh, Joanne, can you see that small? If not, I'll ask Sister Marilyn. She got a little bit better eyes than no. she don't wear glasses. So she might be able to see it. <laughs> I'm going to try. How's that? <laughs> yeah, just read what's in the red. Don't read the black. What is it, Matthew 15? Yeah, Matt, Matthew 14, verses 15 through 17. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Amen. And bless you. Amen. 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 As I always ask, remove me and replace it with thee, Heavenly Father. As I yes. come before this congregation with this message, Heavenly Father. This message is from you to them, Heavenly Father. And let them know that you stand for us, Heavenly Father. And any, anything that we need, we can turn to you, Heavenly Father. When we feel weak and weary, we know all we have to do is call on you. And you give us that extra pump. Heavenly Father, bless us as we go forth this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 The scripture says that the disciples tell Jesus and, and understand that it was getting crowded. It's late in the evening, people were tired, and they said, send them away. Jesus, send them to their villages, send them to go buy some food. They're hungry. I, you know, you can understand, you can see when somebody's hungry. You can see hunger in folks' eyes. Amen. He says, send them away to go get food. And Jesus says, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Mm -hmm. And they probably look at Jesus in puzzlement thinking, we've got about 5,000 people out there. And we got five loaves of bread and two fish. And you're telling us to feed them? And Jesus is like, exactly, that's what I'm saying. I want you to feed these folks. Mm -hmm. So they're probably scratching their heads. But if they've been with Jesus all this time and seen so many things, they shouldn't have even doubted when he told them to feed them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. It's so good to be in the house. Anybody glad to be in the house? Anybody yeah. worship here today? Anybody just glad that God gave you one more day? Amen. He put a little more fuel in your tank. Anybody out there ever think that you've used all that you have? I mean, I used it up. Ever do all that you thought that you can do and then you find that there's something else that you have to do? One more thing you needed to do. Oh, I didn't finish this. I don't want to finish it in the morning, but I don't. I'm, it's one more thing to do. Ever burn your last candle and you find out that it's still dark. And that's how I've felt lately, church. i got to be truthful with you. I have to confess. Sometimes I felt a little wore out. And quite often folks say, well, you need to sit down and take a rest. My wife always tells me, you need to take a rest. And then she gets that look on her face like she's been sucking on a lemon and a prune. 
And she had, you know, her lips go all mm -hmm. And she goes, I know you ain't gonna sit down. And I said, you're right. But I burned all my fuel. Yeah. And I find there's still something left. Sometimes, you know, church will look at a situation and we think to ourselves, how in the world am I going to get this done? You know, because we don't always get to look at small situations. Sometimes we look at monumental situations. We look at enormous things that need to be done. When I first looked at the project that we are taking on now, I had to take a lot of things into consideration. As I walked around the church and I surveyed, even before becoming pastor, you see, God gives you a vision early on because he prepared. When God's preparing you for something, he's giving you visions as you're going along. You don't always understand what that vision is, but he's giving you visions because he says, I want you to prepare your mind for what I have in store for you in the future. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I don't want that to go in your head. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. So, so as he gave me this vision, as, as I remember pulling up, thinking, there's work to be done. Yes, sir. And, and I'm not just talking about the last few months. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, God reaches way back on us to give us a vision that we don't understand. To run a thought through our head that we think, why am I even thinking like this? Let me dismiss this. Because it means nothing to me. I'm, I'm just an ordinary Joe. But you see, God says, you're not ordinary. You're like the man holding the ladder as the pastor's on the top of the ladder pain. You're not ordinary. You're important. Amen. So there's a job for you to do, but you don't understand what that job is yet. I'm just showing you glimpses of what your job is for the future. And I didn't understand. I just kept looking, and I remember as I was coming, visiting, and I would roll up and I would say, there's work to be done. Amen. But I didn't know what to do. And as I looked at the situation as we came into beginning to formulate a process and a plan and a, and a vision, I thought to myself, how am I going to get this done? Where will I get the materials? Where will I get the help? I, I looked at the small, shorter parts, and I said, that will be easy. But when I walked around on this side of the church, and I had to, to look up, I said, well, there's not much to stand on. There's not much to lean. Th that's a long way up, but I have to think of a plan. And so I thought, I said, well, I have a ladder that would probably reach, but it's in Uniontown. I can't remember how I got the ladder from Lowe's to my house exactly. I don't remember if I put it in my car. I, I, I don't remember. I know that they didn't deliver it. But I'm thinking all the time, how am I going to get this ladder here? Because I'm all thinking about this enormous project. You, 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 you see? I'm looking at a situation trying to figure out how will I get it done. Where do I exactly start? What part will I go to first? And then what will be next? What is my, going to be my process? Because if you're going to start a job, you better have a plan. Amen? Oh, right now. You don't want to just say, well, I'm going to build a house and you don't have a plan. You don't even want to say, I'm going to go wash dishes and you don't have a plan. You know, I see some people, they have dishes going everywhere. And, and, and I used to be a professional dishwasher. Worked in a restaurant when I got out of prison. Didn't ever want to wash dishes. Didn't ever want to work in a restaurant. And God says, I need to humble you. I'm putting you there to teach you some things that you get to use later in life. Amen. And so when I entered the kitchen, I can remember how haphazard and how confused and crazy everything was. And I said, let, let me stop for a minute and think about a plan, how I want to accomplish this job. And so as I formulated a plan and I spoke with the owner, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to save you money, which got his attention. 
I'm going to save you time and frustration, and I'm going to make it a safer workplace so that I can work more efficiently. And as I divulge my plan to him, he says, you know, I think that might work. And to this day, they still use my plan. But you have to have a plan when you start a job, amen? amen. amen. And so as I surveyed everything that needed to be done, I says, I, I have a plan now. I know where I want to start. I know what goes next. You see, we look at a challenge sometimes, thinking that, have I bit off more than I can chew? Oh, this was a big project. This ain't no small project. There, there's the belfry that needs to be repaired. There's siding that needs to be repaired. We had to power wash it. We had to formulate a plan. But I, I, at times I was thinking that I'd bite off more than I, than I can chew. God says, no, I, I gave you enough. That you got two jaws. You can pack stuff in there and use the more false teeth to chew it all up. Amen. 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 See, I, I just want to talk about what I know about it, man. And then, once we remember that we can look to God for our strength, yeah. we remember that we can accomplish all things through God who will strengthen us. Amen. We realize that if nobody else has our backs, now all of our friends turn away. Nobody shows up. God has our backs. Yes, yeah, yeah. he do. See, he ain't going to leave you or forsake you. He'll send you out there by yourself. He says, just, just, take, just take a minute. Take a breath. Let, let, let me put this thought in your head. Let me organize your thoughts for you so that you know what to do and how to do it in sequence to get your job done. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, God will do it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what God will do it. Yes, he will. We realize that if nobody else has our backs and God does, we don't have to worry about a thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody ought to be giving God praise right now. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. Somebody ought to be hollering at the top of their voices. Hallelujah! All praise is to our God. Because without Him, where would I be? Amen. Where would we be if it wasn't Amen. God in our Amen. You know, there, there's no such thing as that luck. It's all about blessings. It's all about grace. It's about mercy. It's about a God who loved us enough that he reached out of the mighty clouds of heaven and pulled us up and helped us along our way. That he said, you still keep getting it wrong. You got it wrong, and 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 you don't get a prison, but I'm going to give you a prison. I'm going to give you my son, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 He's got to come down here and he's got to suffer some things and he's got to go through some things that I don't want him to go through, but he's got to do it because you can't get it right. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you this thing called salvation. Yes. I'm going to give you this thing called love. This thing called grace. This thing called mercy. All praises yes, to God. You know, looking at today's scripture, we see this, this, this group of men who are what they, they think is at the end of their rope. You know, they're tired. Oh, yeah, they're tired. It's been all day. Jesus has been healing the folks, talking to folks, preaching, going all over the place. And remember, they didn't have cars. Everywhere they went, they had to. Everybody, y'all remember them days when y'all didn't have a car? That's right. Catching the bus. That's right. So you had to walk to the bus stop. Then you would sit there at the bus stop. And you want to hope that the bus man saw you. Because, you know, sometimes they get a little arrogant ride right past you. Yes, Lord. And if you got to the bus stop, you're just hoping that you didn't have to stand there with some kooka Louie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael Jackson was at my house last night with a helicopter, but he told me I had to catch the bus today to work. <laughs> <laughs> and I was fixing breakfast, but my dog said he wanted sausages instead of eggs. <laughs> and then he called his friend Ralphie. Mama had me when she was my brother, but she was my sister first. And she said it herself. So you see, they didn't have the, the conveniences that we could jump on our car and have our privacy and just. <laughs> and my wife's uh, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> understand that they're at the end of the road, that they're tired, you see, 
They've been busy all day. They've been following Jesus and walking around and he's been doing all these things. And they get to the end of the road. They get to the night. And, and Jesus is still talking to folks. Yes. And, and you ever get tired? And, and you just really want to just go and sit down somewhere and have some rest? Mm -hmm. They're tired. And I kind of get the feeling that they may be a little bit annoyed. You, 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 you know, because... It's funny. <laughs> You ever been with somebody and they, they, they just had that one more thing and you're like, really? Y'all know the word to come out really that I'm thinking, right? <laughs> Black folks that I'm talking about, see y'all know. <laughs> but you go, really? But you don't really want to say much because you've come so far. But you're running on empty, amen? Yeah. Matter of fact, that's the title of our sermon today, Running on Empty. Because see, a lot of times we run on empty. As I left here yesterday, I was running on empty. Because I tried to do all that I could do, and there's still something else to do, and I didn't feel complete, but I was running on empty. As my wife was out here vacuuming and singing and playing the music, and her and Joanne were having a fellowship and singing and doing I sat in the office and I grabbed a quick nap because I was running on empty. Amen. I mean, let's look at what led up to the day's events to this point with the disciples. And they've been with Jesus. He's been healing and preaching and it's probably hot and uncomfortable. And, and at the end of the day, they were just looking to get some rest. And, and the crowds are still there. And they're probably thinking, can't y'all folks just go summer just, man, come in for real? Y'all been with him all day. It's getting late. Now y'all talking about y'all hungry. What y'all think? Y'all hungry? What you want me to do? See, Jesus had a plan. Amen. Let, 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 me, let me tell you something. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. All right. Don't, don't underestimate when, when you call on God what he can't do. But see, as tired as I was, he said, I, I can give you a little bit more energy. But I'm going to give you enough to go home, fool, because you ain't got enough sense to sit down. Right. So I'm going to send you home and make you fall asleep. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you'll be trying to do something else. Because all the way home, I'm thinking, I'm going to go out and shed. She don't even know. I'm going to get home, I'm going to shed, and I'm going to do some work. Because I still got some energy. I ain't no energy enough. <laughs> I'm running on empty. God say, that's what you think. You're going to sleep in that chair. You just don't want that. But there were times running around all day just looking for some rest. Anybody here know what it's like to just want some rest? Anybody? Just just a little bit of rest. Just some peace and rest. Just So you might say that they were running on fumes. They were running on dust, so just running on empty. Because quite often we run on empty. We push ourselves to the limit and we run on empty because we, we want to get it done. We want to take care of that one thing that we planned on doing. It's just a little bit more to do, but your fuel seems to be consumed. And that's when you, you say, God, just give me enough to get just through. Enough. Just, just enough. Thank you, Jesus. You see, I, I know that feeling. Somebody say, running on empty. Somebody say, running on empty. Running on empty. I know what it's like to have ambition. I know what it's like to have drive. I know what it's like to have a vision. And you have to run on fumes because you used all your gas. You burn out. You're spent. You're over the limit. See, church, just when you think, just when you think that the tank is empty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just when you think it's over, you find out that God has put just a little more something, something in your tank. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Quite often, you know, I thought about how it must have been to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to think about this. You see, it was probably really exciting at first. Here, here's Jesus. 
follow me. I got a new way. You ain't got to be burning sacrifices. Come on. I got all you grace, mercy, all these. Come on. It's a new, it's, it's, you, you don't know it yet. There's going to be something called the New Testament. Where you're going to be. So it's probably really exciting. He's teaching and preaching a new way of life. Yes. You know what I mean, don't you? You see, Jesus, Jesus was a new way of thinking, a new way of life. No, no more sacrifices, but offering redemption and salvation and restoration and peace and healing. All good. Yes. Yes. And to the bottom drops out. Yes. See, y'all know Anybody know about the bottom drop now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Y'all yeah. know what I mean. At first it was all, it wasn't bad. It was going to get. Come on, y'all. Yeah. We still face the same persecutions as they did back then, only slightly a little bit different. But the trouble came in small doses. You know, when we start, we have a lot of friends when we're out in the world. Mm -hmm. Says, man. <laughs> I don't care if I'm late to work tomorrow. I don't care how I feel. Girl, you ain't got to go nowhere. Come on, I'll buy you next one. <laughs> hey, sis, got another joint? Got another rock for that pipe? Cuz, let's go to the strip joint. You see, they're all there with you. But when when Jesus, when God changes your life, ha, you better say it. Yeah. When God says, you don't need that drink, and he says, you know, I'm sitting here lonely, and I'm tired of this, and this ain't working for me. My stomach hurt, my head hurt. I'm late for work, and I'm trying to rush, and, it ain't a, and I can't find money for the crack, and I'm getting tired of looking for the crack, man, and everybody keep robbing, and I'm tired of going to the strip joint because all I do is throw my dollars away, and I don't get nothing, and go home smelling like these broth. And, so then God steps into your life. Yes, sir. Praise and when God steps into your life and he yes, changes sir. things, and he says, well, come on, Mary, come on, Willie, come on, Ray, come on, Roslyn, come on, uh, Ruby, come on, uh, Joanne, come on. We went, and he says, no, 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 I, I don't do those things no more. See, God has touched me. He showed me how to do it. I thought I was happy, but I was miserable. And now I'm so happy because I don't have to do it. I feel so much better. I feel cleaner. I feel redeemed. Amen. 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 And that's when the persecution starts. That's when the finger point starts. That's when they start talking about you. That's when they start throwing rocks. Come on, somebody, let me get you one of these rocks. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You're supposed to be with us, we're the sinners. See, that's what happens when you start following Christ. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody know. The trouble, it starts with small doses. They smart. They start with the chitter chatter. They start with the you see, the crowds came at the end of the day. Anybody get to the end of the day and say, please, just don't let another thing happen today. Just please, just let me just go in the house. I don't want to go and find nothing broke. I don't want nothing burnt. I don't want to hear no phone call. Just let me go in there. All I want to do is my feet hurt. My corners hurt. My feet even stink. I'm just going to get some ramen. Just don't let nothing happen. Just Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I got bad news for you. Anybody, anybody, is it just me? No. Anybody get to the end of their day and you just want some solace? Yes. You just want to sit down? You don't want to hear from Cousin Ray Ray, Sister Jenny, Brother Randy. You don't want to hear from Cousin Lick. You don't want to hear from nobody. All you want to do is just sit down. See, when you already had a rough day and the crowds come, you see, they wanted more Jesus. They wanted to hear what he was saying. They wanted to be healed. And now they wanted to be fed. And what did Jesus say? Feed my sheep. When I was studying through my ordination, the most important thing I remember them saying was to feed 
my sheep. Because when you're the shepherd, it's my responsible, my responsibility to feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. The sheep don't belong to me. The sheep belongs to my father, but I'm the shepherd. I'm in the field responsible for the sheep. It's my job to protect the sheep. It's my job to make sure that the sheep are fed. When I'm running on empty, it's my job to find the strength, the courage, the desire, the tenacity to continue to feed the sheep. Yeah. Yes. I have to feed the sheep by leading by good example. Yes. You see, I can't tell you to do something if I'm not willing to do it myself. All right now. A lot of folks say, well, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Brother Willie asked him a couple of weeks ago, he said, well, the church about paper towel, the church buys this. Why do that? Because I'm leading by example. Okay. You see, I take pride in what I'm doing because God has loved me so much that when I was in the gutter, drowning, swimming in the mud yes. and the muck in the mire, doing all those disgusting things, that he still loved me, that he yeah. says, I got a garden hose of pure Jesus blood that will wash you off, make you clean, restore you, bring you back, make you smile again, make you be able to hold your head up again. I'll put a suit back on your back. I'll put a smile back. I'll give you a skip in your walk. I'll show you that nobody can do it like me. Let me wash you off. And so I says, God, thank you. Anybody got to the end of the day? See, when you had that rough day, and now you're being fed, because God says, I have somebody to feed my sheep. I have somebody to look out for you. I have somebody to come to you. You got to trust me. Amen? Amen. Amen. You got to call on You can't call on Ralph. Don't call on Bob or Jessica or Francine. Call on me. So as he prepared me to feed the sheep, he says, I'm not just talking about feeding them in food because that's important too. You, you know, one of the most important things that we've been doing lately, mm -hmm. and I can see the zeal in everybody's eyes when we do it. You should see the look on Sister Marilyn's face when she starts talking about having dinners here. You would think that she's six years old about to get a black Barbie doll for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you have no idea the glow that comes from her when she starts talking about cooking. And Brother Ray, he gets so excited. And Brother, because we're ready to feed the sheep, because once we fellowship and break bread with you, we can get to your souls. Mm -hmm. Fellowship. And it's not just my responsibility to feed the sheep, you see, because as my sheep, you have to feed other sheep. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we lead by example, People see what we're doing and they says, well, I want a part of that. Amen. See, I, I remember when he was going through the alleys. I remember when he was doing that. I remember when she was drinking. I remember when he was cussing. I remember when she was smoking cigarettes. I remember when they was doing this, that, and the other thing. And, and look at him now. Amen. Amen. See, because some of y'all remember when y'all look like this? We ain't always been able to walk like this. Yes, mm -hmm. Amen. We ain't always been able to do this. Yes, so some of us had to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our souls was running on empty. Because we had nowhere else to go. We burned all our fuel. We thought it was the end of the road. We were broke down, disgusted, busted, tore from the floor. Mm -hmm. And somebody told us about this man named Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, 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 Lord. Somebody Lord. told us that when the tank runs out, we can call on Jesus. Yeah. 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 Somebody said, I don't care how dirty you are, how bad your knees are scuffed up, how much cussing you didn't did, how much drinking you didn't did, how many dollars you didn't throw at, 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 at Sunshine Johnson. <laughs> Jesus. Is there waiting on you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And you doubt it at first because, see, when you take it, it's if you don't know where to go. All you can think about is how am I going to get home? How am I going to get to the next? But see, something happens. And when that thing happens, and you say, God, I can't do it no more by myself. I'm trying. I keep trying. I keep messing up. Every time I mess up, I get more disgusted. Yes. Every time I get more disgusted, I get more angry. Every time I get more angry, I think about more dumb stuff. Every time I think about more dumb stuff, I do more dumb stuff. Yes, sir. Every time I do more dumb stuff, I get deeper and deeper in this. And, and, and so they say you got this son named Jesus. They, they, they say that, that, that he's going to listen to me no matter what. Because, see, I call Brother Ray, he ain't asking for him. I call Brother Larry, he ain't asking for him. I call Brother William, he act like he couldn't hear me. And I call Sister Roslyn. And she started fell asleep on the phone. But they say, they say your son Jesus won't do that. So they say when I call, yes. it's gonna go straight through. I ain't gonna get no business sitting. I won't get the answering service. He yeah. gonna answer. He gonna say, "Hello, my son." And he gonna listen to me. And once he starts listening to me, see, I talked about this last week. See, once he starts listening to you, once he hears your your plea, once he hears your cry, and you say, "God, I'm, I'm reaching out to you." Hallelujah, Joy, Lord, Lord. I need help. I need you. I need you in my life. I, I have nowhere else to turn, but I'm willing to trust you. If I could just trust you, if you could just do that. And, and we'll see when he hears you, and he says, I heard you. I can fix you. Do you trust me? Do you believe it? When your heart melts and it opens, and I said, I've trusted everybody else. I believe everybody else, and nobody can. I trust you, God. I trust you. I believe you. And then when you believe him, and you start seeing these small things happen, and he says, don't look for the big stuff to happen right away. Because see, you ain't ready for that. It's like, you know, you can't give a baby a steak. You kind of give them milk. And they start sipping the milk. And then you can put a little of that mushy grain stuff in there and smash the bananas and the peas. And they can eat that a little bit at a time. And then all of a sudden you see these little things coming. Well, I ain't going to mind no more. They grow in the mouth. And then they call them teeth. And then they start chewing and they start eating meat. And then as they start to eat, they start to grow a little bit more. And see, that's how it is when you go with God. You just don't, all of a sudden, they're getting sick. No, you start with the milk. Yeah, that's right. Once you start with the milk, he starts to grow you. And the more you grow you, the more you get the faith. And the more you get the faith, the more you get the trust. And the more you get the trust, the more you get the blessing. And as the blessings start growing, and the trust start growing, and the faith start growing, and then you start realizing, I don't have to do that old stuff no more. I ain't got to call on Pookie. I ain't got to call on Moo Moo. I ain't got to call on none of them. I can call on God. I'm God on this. And God ain't going to have no business in me when I call him. See, because everybody else, they look at the call ID and he says, oh, it's Rob Pookie. There's something going on. Oh, uh, heck yeah. Man, if she want to borrow some money, William Carr must be broke down. But see, God said, I got you. I got your back. I don't care what it is. You call on me. You ain't got no money to get your car fixed. Hello, Mr. Rice. I'd like to offer you this stuff. I understand that you and me, you don't know me, but here's something. I, I don't know. I was compelled to help you. So you see, folks don't understand that kind of blessings when they come in your life. Folks don't understand when you have a windfall and then a windfall from gambling. It's a windfall from God. Amen. 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 Folks don't understand Amen. that you had to reach out. And when you reached out, he was listening. And he was waiting. He said, I just been waiting. Yes. I knew yes. he was coming, but I was just waiting. Amen. I, I had to wait for those conditions to get right, that you quit trusting the world. Yeah. He said, I'm coming to you, Father. Amen. 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 That's what we had to do. Amen. 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 Sometimes we feed with food, but God just wants us to feed with his word. Amen. Amen. Just feed my sheep. I love the spirit that is taking place in this place, in this church right now. You see, the way we have taken a new attitude towards ourselves, a new attitude towards our community, a new attitude towards our fellowship, it's something different and you can see it here in the church. If you were here before and you come now, you say, what is it? Amen. See, God has put a new spirit in here. Amen. And he says, all you got to do is be faithful and continue to trust me. I'll grow the church. You just do what I'm asking you to do Amen. to prepare. Because once we you see, right now we're in the preparation stage. We, we want to prepare before the crowds come in. Yes. We're not wait for the crowds to come in. Because when they come in, they must, I'm impressed with what God's doing. Amen. Amen. You think the community ain't looking at what we're doing around here? Yes. When they see us making noise out there with power sprayers and, and painting and making noise and music and singing and climbing that, you think they're not paying attention? 
But you see, God is paying even more attention yes, because he said, I want you to be the example for my community so that they know that I am here. I'm in that place. Amen. I'll fill it up when I'm ready. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 We have developed a drive, church, a determination, a desire to carry on God's word and to do his will. Yes. We started by feeding the sheep, having fellowship, breaking bread with our brothers and sisters. During these times, anybody ever start running on empty? You know, we get tired. The kitchen crew gets tired. Folks come in and they eat, they think it's all rosy good, but they don't see the background work. Amen. Right now. Amen. See, see, it ain't all that easy. Brother Ray and Sister Marilyn in the kitchen cooking the night before, they don't see that. Amen. Amen. They see the stuff set up out there. Even the service, they don't see the preparation. They see the stuff set up. Sometimes they're going to help set up the preparation for the food. But the real work, they don't see that. Amen? Amen. They don't see how tired you are when you stay up at 1 o'clock in the morning and you try to be back there the next morning to church. Yes. That you're running on empty. Anybody start to feel tired? Anybody think that they just can't go on? And just when you think you can't take another step, just when you think it's all over, just when you think that there's no more, you call on God. And you get that second one. Yes, uh, crazy. See, I've been running on empty for a while now. But God keeps pushing me Amen. and supplying me and providing for me. Yeah. And he says, it's time for you to sit your little dark self down. <laughs> now, my wife tries, but see, she ain't got the power of God. Yet. <laughs> All she can do is that. <laughs> and I listen to her. But when God speaks to you, <laughs> let me tell y'all something. <laughs> When God say sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, and you think, well, you're right. And God said, okay, I told you, sit down. He said, but I just got water. He said, I see it, sit down. And he said, okay, I'm going to just give me a drink of water. You don't know it yet, God, but I'm going Right back out. And, uh, <laughs> 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 hey, babe. Yeah, <laughs> I fell asleep. I got a cookie today. How long have I been out? Not two hours. <laughs> God will sit you down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That second breath, that second push, that second drive, that second determination to get things done. You know, church, I know at the end of the night, they were just ready to rest. They were ready to throw in the towel and call it quits for the night. But they had to run on fumes. They had to run on empty to get the job done. Amen. Ain't it good to know that God has just that extra push for us to get things done. Yeah, man. I've been running on empty, but he gave me enough juice to make it through the day. Yeah. Yes, he gave me enough juice to make it to dinner today. We got the church that you talked to her that you made plans. He didn't tell you. He said, Marilyn, we're going to Olive Garden, so now we're going to Olive Garden after work come to church. <laughs> I didn't mean to tell, but I had to tell. Because <laughs> I invited some more folks. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> we go for the show. <laughs> Oops, did I say that? <laughs> but I guess he decided that maybe you needed a break. We all needed a break. Because we've been working hard, amen. We've been running on empty. Mm -hmm. We've been doing so much that people don't really recognize or realize or understand the gravity of what we're doing and why we're doing it. It's not for our self-gratification, but it's because God commanded us to do this. Amen. Amen. He's been providing for us and taking care of us and giving us all that we need. Amen. He's given us these years. He's given joy. What are you at? 177 years old now? Somewhere <laughs> 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 And she's still.
still looks like she's probably in her 50s. Amen. Still looking good. Amen. I, I never would have thought that she was in her 70s. And I ain't trying to give you age because you already gave that. But ain't God good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just, just a good God that he's yes. blessed us. So he says, I want to give y'all the rest of that. So now we can pay for uh, her, 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 her dinner. You can have two of anything at the dollar, man. Pay down. It's good to just be in the house of the Lord, smile. Yes, sir. Once again, it's very good to see Brother Larry back with us. We, we miss you. We love you, brother. And as I begin to close, I just want to know that our hearts and minds are clear. Once again, the address to the church, grab a pen. Grab a pen. You want to send money to us. We're not begging you. We just ask you to solicit you for your donations to help us with our building fund. Because the lights, we have to pay lights. We have to pay the bills. But the address is 137 in Dora Way. Street. 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 Indoor Street. That's E N D O R A Street, S T Buena Vista, B U E N A V I S T A, Pennsylvania, 15018. Feel free to send as much as you want. Don't feel guilty about it. You say, anyway, I'm going to send them $500. Don't feel bad. Send it. If you say I ain't got another dollar, send it. Amen. We take all your donations. We enjoy you. We love you. We hope that you enjoy the word. We hope that you come back and maybe one day come and visit us in person. Because once you come twice, we got you. It is over. Joy just don't know yet. We got her. Amen. <laughs> we love Joanne. She is she's a wonderful sister. She's very faithful. She we just enjoy any time that she can spend with us over here. She breaks away from her home church. And it's just a blessing to have her in our presence. It's a Amen. blessing to have Sister Ruby in our presence all the way from Toronto, Canada. Ruby. So all hearts and minds are clear as prepared to dismiss. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing to come before you. Spread your word, spread your message, Heavenly Father. Let others know that what you've done for us that you have for them. It just doesn't belong to one person, Heavenly Father. You gave your son for the world, and we are so grateful for it. We're grateful that we don't have to burn lambs and doves and different things on the altar anymore because your son paid the price, the eternal price, the price that he didn't owe, the price that we can't pay, but we're so grateful that you did it for us. We ask you to continue watching over us. Bless us. Bless each and every member yes. as they travel to the highways and byways. Bless Sister Ruby as she's traveling back to Toronto, whichever means of transportation she chooses. Bless Brother Larry as he's traveling to see his brother and his family. Keep everybody safe, Heavenly Father. Yes. Touch their families, Heavenly Father. Touch all those who are sick and shut in, Heavenly Father. Touch those who have a desire to come out who couldn't make it today. Yes. Touch those who had to work and couldn't make it today. Touch all of them. But most of all, I ask that you continue to have patience yes. and love for the helpless sinner, the one that doesn't know you, the one that's the rejection, Heavenly Father, the one that's still out in the world that doesn't understand that you are the way, the truth, and the life, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. So with these things, we ask that you continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 amen.